So stand up, please. And just place your feet about hip width apart. So if you were to draw a line from your second toe up the shins, it would go through the middle of your knees into the sort of felt center of your pelvis on either side and all the way up. And then gently shake out your arms, close your eyes softly. And sense your feet standing on the earth. You might be swaying a little bit. And notice when the swaying stops and when you come to a felt sense of uprightness. And then just see how your feet feel, how your knees, how your pelvis feels, how your chest feels. Observe your breath, the back of the neck, the head. And now I invite you to place one hand on your chest and the other hand on your sacrum here. And just stand here for a moment. So we're touching forward and back. What holds us is the back. What we rely on, our safety. And how we present ourselves to the world is the front. You might sense your heartbeat underneath your hand. You might just want to say a little prayer for yourself. You might want to set an intention for this practice. You might simply feel gratitude for being able to experience this life with all that it brings. And so if our body is a structure, it's a structure we've been given, how we inhabit this structure, how we live in this structure is our choice. And so by entering into our body deeply through movement, We'll be able to also enter realms of the mind that invite us to change, to be curious, and to release anything that doesn't serve us. The next exhale, push your hand gently into the sternum. And on the next inhale, push your hand into the sacrum. On the exhale, hand into the sternum, on the front. And on the inhale, press the back hand forward into the sacrum. And continue this movement, very subtle movement in your own breath. Exhale, you press the front. Inhale, you press the back. And you might notice that with this gentle movement, you're given a deeper sense of self, of security. It will help align the spine. And then release your hands. Take a moment to observe your body. And then gently bend your knees, bring your hands to the ground. 
and then trace along the earth, trace up the second toe next to the big toe, up your shins, up your knees, and then up into the pelvis. Two more times, going down, bend your knees. So you hinge at the hips, trace the earth, second toe, center of the knees, all the way up. And one last time, bend your knees, hinge at the hips, come down and trace. and then release the hands. You might sense your legs deepening into the earth. You can imagine your tailbone, so just below, below the sacrum, rooting down into the earth, as if it were literally a tail that's pushing down into the earth. You're really rooted there, feel your legs strong. And now imagine the top of your head and then the top of your head has a pointed cap on it. So see if you can go all the way to the tip of the pointed cap. Okay, so you can leave your, go up with your arms or leave them down and just imagine. And then take the tip of your pointed cap and draw little circles onto the ceiling. It's a tiny little movement. You'll notice your head wanting to move up. It's at the same time your tailbone's rooting down and you have a pointed cap and you're making little circles on the ceiling. Beautiful. And then release. Sense how you're standing now. Strong body. Rooted legs. And then turn your body over to the right as far as you can. Bend your neck, chin to chest, and then just roll down the right side. Knees bent the whole time. Then come over to the center. Knees are bent and roll back up. Move over to the left. On the next exhale, knees bent. Roll all the way down. Come back to center and then pushing through your feet. Come up again. Two more times. Very gentle, slow movement. You're always hinging at the hips so there's no extra strain on the lower back. And then to the other side. And then coming back up. And then keeping your feet apart as they are, bring your hands to your hips, bend your knees, and then roll your belly inwards as far as you can, look towards your belly, and then push your tailbone out and you open your chest. Roll your belly inwards, elbows come forward and then open up your chest, elbows move back. Okay, continue this a couple of times, sensing your navel here, so your energetic center. And then release, push through your feet and stand up tall. Remember you still have the pointed cap on, so above the crown of your head, you're reaching up towards the sky. Beautiful. And then we're going to take the blocks or your little stool. So if you want, you could hold on to a wall for balance. But otherwise, I recommend you try without holding on. Place one foot on the blocks. And the other leg will be dangling. Okay. So push through the standing leg and then just let the leg swing, the other leg swing freely. It's 
So the lower back is greatly influenced by the psoas muscle. They call it the soul also. So very, very old muscle. And often it's tense, which leads to tension in the lower back and in the pelvis. Okay, so just swing one leg and imagine it were a pendulum. So it's not really attached to anything, except a little bit here and you just swing it freely. Beautiful. And then you can shake it out. Just really let it swing. You can always bend the knee of the standing leg. And then release, come down off the block. Take a moment here standing. If you notice a difference between right side and left, you probably have a longer side and a shorter side now. And then we'll do the other leg. So you stand up on the blocks. You can place your hands somewhere to help balance. And then with your eyes looking slightly forward and down, just release the legs and let it swing freely. Imagine it being a pendulum. So the psoas goes down along all the vertebra of the lower back and attaches also to the diaphragm. So our breathing has to do as well with relaxation and um, lessening the tension in the lower back. Okay, so just let your leg swing freely and then shake it out. it swing again really as if it were a pendulum so unattached or attached just by a fine tendon here and then release come back down take a moment to sense right side and left eyes closed beautiful okay and now we're going to come down in a squat so feet further apart and just squat down. Okay, beautiful. Bring your elbows here to the inside of your knees and move your knees back. If you can, you can always place, if you have your blocks, you can place them underneath your heels if your heels don't come to the ground. And then try and lift up your heart, both hands together in front of the heart. and then release down into sitting. And then from here, with your hands behind you, fingers facing forward. I invite you to curl the navel in, just as we did when we were standing, and see if you can release the upper body down very slowly with using your arms and your elbows as a help until you're lying on the ground and then outstretch your legs outstretch your arms and take a moment to sense your body lying on the earth what parts of it touch the earth and how the floor reflects back your body And then place your knees on the ground. And then bring your belly button down towards the navel. And your tailbone comes towards the head. And then push your belly button out and the tailbone moves down towards the ground. Okay, so do this little movement several times releasing the belly button and then pressing it down into the earth. You can bring a finger, if you like, or a hand on your belly here just to continue that sensation, connect to the sensation. And then feel as you do this movement, if there's any echo of the movement in the soles of your feet. Make sure the soles of your feet are on the ground. Okay. 
and then release. Lift up the toes of the right leg, the right foot, keep the heel on the ground, and then push your heel all the way down until your leg is stretched. Push your heel along the mat until your leg is outstretched, tense the leg, and then release it completely. And then lift up the toes on the left foot, keep the heel into the ground, push the heel Tense your left leg, draw the toes towards you, and then release completely. And take a moment to observe the length of your legs, the pelvis on the ground, and then place your feet back up onto the earth. And then just gently lift your chin up towards the stone and the head comes off the ground and then go back again head comes up and notice the lower back goes towards the ground belly button goes towards the ground you look towards the feet or between the legs and then come back down and do three more times come up as far as you can and then back down again And after the third time, place your feet to the outer edges of the mat and allow the knees to fall in and touch each other. Knees are touching, feet are apart. Release your shoulder, your hands, your arms, your body around the earth. And then bring the feet to the foot together. And under the distance, and then to the second toe, but that's the same distance. Not too far away and not too close to the pelvis. And then pressing through your feet, bring your tailbone in towards you. And then move the belly button in towards the spine and lift as far as your shoulder blade. And then gently vertebra by vertebra, allow your spine to come back down. Just to continue this movement, tailbone in towards you, belly button towards the earth, and then you lift up towards the shoulder blade, and then from there back. Try to do this movement with you must have it possible. Uh, no effort required. You might imagine just the spine curling in towards you and lifting up. I think it moves the spine. Okay. Two more times. And release your legs down, your arms down. Take a moment, sense the body here. And then place both feet on the ground. Bring both arms forward. Curl your head in and then move all the way up. How far you can go and then all the way back. All the way up and all the way back. You're curling in towards yourself. One more time. And then release, release the arms down. Let both knees move over to the right and your head to the left. Your 
and the long body of body receives the light of the left. And then gently come back to center, knees up, and then both knees over to the left, head to the right. Let your knees get heavy with these the lower back. And then both knees back to center. And then bring the knees in towards you, grasp just behind your knees, roll back and then up into a seated position. Oh, super. And then turn to come onto all fours. You wish you could just slightly lift up your mat and fold it to place your knees down, to cushion them a little bit. And then both hands underneath your shoulders. Beautiful. Okay, and then from here, so if you remember the pendulum of your leg, outstretch the right leg placing the toes in the ground, and then just lift the toes up and down again, up and down. Okay, so this will gently activate the core, but you might be able to feel this a little bit like the pendulum, so not too much effort, lifting the leg up and letting it down again. Toes in the ground. And then release, knee to the ground, sit back into a child's pose, bow your head down deeply. Release the back of your neck. And then on the next inhale, come up onto all fours. Outstretch your left leg, toes in the ground. And then just gently lift the left leg up and down. Very small movements. Notice how your belly button is involved. So that's the, the center between the heavy bones of your skull, your rib cage, and your pelvis. And then bend the knee back again and sit back into child's pose. And then on the next inhale, come up onto all fours. On the next exhale, back into downward facing dog. Keeping your knees bent, reaching the tailbone up towards the sky. And then in this downward facing dog, we're going to draw the belly button in, look towards it and then the sit bones out towards the sky. So what we did standing at the very beginning, we're going to repeat here. And also what we did lying. Okay, so it's the same movement. Tailbone moves in towards you, tailbone up towards the sky. Two more times. And then bring your knees back down to the ground and sit back into child's pose. On the next inhale, come up. Bring your elbows down to the ground. Interlace your fingers in front of you. So you have your arms. When you look down, it looks like a triangle. And then again, outstretch the right leg. And then outstretch the left leg. So you're in a plank on your forearms. Remember the long pointed hat you have, so move your, the crown of your head forward and root your legs back. And then bring your knees to the ground, sit back into child's pose, allow your arms to stretch out in front of you, bow your head down deeply. And one last time, forearm arm plank, 
forearms down, interlace the fingers, outstretch your left leg, and then the right leg, and remain here for a couple of breaths. Forearms into the ground, hips in one line, pointed hat in front of you. Three more breaths here. And then knees to the ground, sit back into child's pose, bow your head down deeply. On the next inhale, come into onto all fours. On the exhale, draw your belly in all the way round your back. Come forward and then allow your body to release down onto the earth very gently, like a wave. Elbows underneath the shoulders, your long legs moving back. So remember the pendulum, your legs are loose and free. And we stay here in Sphinx pose, pressing down through the elbows, reaching the heart forward. And then look over your right shoulder, as far as you can behind you. And then come back to center and look over your left shoulder. And then repeat either side, all the way to the right. and all the way to the left. And on the next exhale, release the body down, make a little cushion with your hands and place your forehead down. Let your heels move out to the side. Your legs are apart. Allow your breath here to flow deeply into the belly. Notice how it also fills the lower back. You might remember when we were standing, that you pressed the sternum on the exhale, it's called spine, and you pressed the sacrum on the inhale. So see if you can recall these movements and imagine they were happening now as you're lying on the ground. hands underneath your shoulders, come on to all fours. And from here, bring your left leg forward, bend your left knee and bring both hands to the inside of the left foot. Place the right toes in the ground, lift the right leg and slide it back. Slide back on your toes and then lay the knee back down again. We've got a really long stretch in the back, runner's lunge, beautiful. And both hands to the inside, you can move the right foot up, the left foot out a little bit. And then imagine the pointed hat on the crown of your head reaching forward and your tailbone reaching all the way back. Allow the back of your neck to open and your eyes are looking down and slightly forward. And then move your hands back and stretch the front leg as far as you can. And then bring the left foot back. And we'll do the same on the right side. So both hands to the inside, right foot comes forward. And then stretch the left leg and slide it back. You have a really, really wide stance here. Beautiful. 
and then look slightly forward, reach through the crown of your head and through your tailbone. And again, you might feel the hands on your chest as you exhale, the sternum com comes in. And as you inhale, the hand on your back, pressing the sacrum in. And then bring straight, bring your hands back straight from the front leg just a little bit as far as you can and then bring the right leg back we're on all fours your knees are apart and then bring your tailbone in roll your back go for cat pose and then tailbone up and back head forward heart forward cow and continue this movement possibly with a different sense of lightness as you roll around in your hips and your legs are simply a pendulum hanging off the psoas muscle. Times. And then on the next exhale, go back into child's pose. Your arms outstretched, lower your head down to the ground. And allow your inhale to fill the lower back and your exhale to lengthen the whole body. Imagine you were blowing up the lower back. And then come back onto your heels. Bring the right knee forward and the left leg all the way back. So just the knee, and the leg stays straight. And then if you can, bring walk the foot in just a little bit towards the left. Okay, just a tiny bit. So this is not the full pose. And keep the back leg long. And then bring your elbows forward, interlace your fingers and bow your head down. So you're on your lower arms, the right knee is bent and the heel could go into the groin on the left hand side. Very important acupressure point there. It will help release the muscles on the back of your body, which relate here to the ones on the front. Gently coming back, come onto all fours and sit back into child's pose. Your arms are long in front of you, bow your head down. And then coming up onto all fours, we'll do the other side. So left leg forward, right leg all the way back, stretch it all the way back. Beautiful. And then move the left heel slightly over to the right. See if you can touch the groin. If not, it doesn't matter. Keep the leg straight. And then move all the way back with the right leg. Come onto your forearms, interlace your fingers in front of you and bow your head. Be 
feeling length in the lower back. And feeling safe and secure within yourself where you are right now. And then gently coming back, both hands on the ground, front leg goes back and we come into child's pose, arms are forward, head bowed down. And move your breath into the lower back. And then gently come back onto all fours. Your right leg will reach all the way back. Your heart coming forward, right leg off the ground, and then knee into navel. Do this five times. And allow the leg now to move really sort of independently off the rest of the body. So nothing else moves. You'll feel the core, your core wanting to stabilize. Otherwise, your leg feels long and free. One more time. And then release, sit back into child's pose, arms long in front of you, bow your head. And then come back onto all fours and we'll do the same on the other side. So I don't know if I counted correctly. So lift your leg up, knee into navel. Leg up, knee into navel. Leg up, knee into navel. See if you can isolate this movement as much as possible so that we can get into the depth of our muscles and we only effectively use what we need. This creates a sense of peace and a sense of security in movement. And then one more time and then knees down, sit back into child's pose, bow your head down deeply. And then from here up onto all fours and back into downward facing dog. Keeping your knees bent, lengthening the side body and lengthen your pelvis away from your ribs Remember the long hat you have, your head reaching forward, tailbone reaching back. And then eyes forward and then gently move forward, walk forward, walk your feet towards your hands, keep your knees bent. And then draw through the earth, touch your second toe and draw up your legs back into a standing position and then release your hands notice how you stand now the crown of your head tall your feet moving into the ground and your body relaxed and then chin into chest knees are bent roll the body down all the way trace up your second toe trace through the earth second toe shins middle of the knees into the center of the pelvis and then bring one hand to the sternum one hand to sacrum and on the exhale, press into the sternum, or spine. And on the inhale, press into the sacrum. Reach up through the crown of your head and down into your feet. And then release the arms down. 
bring your feet wider apart, come into a squat. Okay, very good. Super. And then from here, sit back. Beautiful. Both feet on the ground, hands behind you, fingers touch facing forward. And then on the next inhale, pushing through the feet, we're going to lift our pelvis up. High as we can, beautiful. And then sit back down again. Pelvis up. Sit back down again. One last time. Pelvis up. And sit back down. And now from here, drop the belly button into the ground and come back into a lying position very carefully without using the large muscles on the belly, but laying your body down vertebra by vertebra all the way. Bring your feet in towards you. Lift your pelvis up towards the sky. Interlace your fingers underneath your buttocks and then roll up onto your shoulders a little bit. So shimmy your arms in towards you, arms outstretched, fingers interlaced, and then lift your pelvis up as far as you can, chin to chest. Lift up the toes of your left foot and push the heel of the left foot into the ground and stretch your left leg and bring your right knee in towards you. And then press your right foot on the ground. Bring your left knee in towards you. Hold your shin with both hands. Lift the toes up on the right leg and then push your heel all the way down until your leg is outstretched. And then draw the left knee in towards you. And then place the left foot back onto the ground. Here, if you wanted, you could place one block very close on either side, just very close to your hips, and then allow the knees to fall out. So this gives you a nice safe support. So very close to the hips. So the blocks are not beneath the knees, but really close to the hips. And then let them fall out to the side. Might want to lift up your shoulders and find a comfortable position here. Arms out by your side, palms facing up. Your eyes are gently closed. You allow your breath to flow as it does, gently and deeply.
And then on the next inhale, bring your knees in towards each other. Bring your feet out towards the side, your feet at the edges of the mat and your knees touch each other. So the knees fall in to touch each other. Your eyes closed. And you might want to imagine the whole back body is settling back into the ground. So your organs are releasing, your kidneys, your adrenals. And the muscles holding the back are softening and widening. Then bring your elbows out 90 degrees and lift your hands behind you, palms facing up. So your arms are like cacti, cactus arms. And then move both knees over towards the right and your head to the left. The same twist we did before, different position of the arm. Bring your knees back to center and let them both fall over to the left, your head to the right. And bring your knees back to center and then let both knees drop in towards each other, the feet stay apart. And then stretch your legs out. Stretch your arms alongside your body, palms facing up. And then just lift up your rib cage by pressing through the elbows. Keep your head down. And then allow your upper body to rest. And then close your eyes. And as with every movement practice, what we do in yoga, as in other disciplines, so we allow for any stagnant energy, prana or chi, to be able to flow again freely. The energy flows freely, just as in a stream or a river, it becomes clear and transparent. And unhindered, like the little stream, making its way through the mossy crevices, I too quietly turn clear and transparent. We sense in ourselves a haven of calm and peace, trust in the mystery of life. We allow everything to move through us, the energy to move through us unhindered, unobstructed.
as we release the will of our muscles. We become more sensitive towards the more subtle energies. We become more sensitive in our minds, more curious, more alive. Allow your whole body to relax, all the muscles to melt, the organs to become heavy. Every inhale, allow a beacon of light to come in through the crown of your head and move down the spine. With every exhale, allow this light to wash around yourself. Clear and transparent like the little stream. And very gently deepen your breath. Start moving your toes and your fingers. Taking a big, big, big inhale, reaching your arms up behind you. Draw your toes towards you. Ah. Oh. Maybe you'd like to make a sound, yawn, then move over the right hand side into a seated position.
somewhere where your hips are slightly elevated. And it's easy for the sacrum to move in on the inhale and the sternum to move down and in on the exhale. Thumb and index finger are touching. Eyes are closed and you can sense into this wellspring. Quietness, clarity, transparency. At one with the present moment, at home. Stay meditating if you wish. Stay in this calmness, this centeredness. And I say thank you very much for coming this evening. I look forward to seeing you on Thursday evening, same time, same place. Namaste. Namaste.